Hey guys and gals, uh, this video is going to be for anybody who has an Akai MPK Mini Mark 1 or 2 and wants to assign the drum pads so that they line up properly with the correct notes when they slice uh, a loop in Ableton. Um, because by default, when you hit pad 1, when you first plug this keyboard in and hit pad 1 in the drum rack, it immediately is set to the root, the root note is G sharp. And anybody who's sliced anything in Ableton, for example, like a loop like this, will know that when, uh, by default, Ableton slices the first note to fall on C1. So what we need to do is tell this, tell the pads in the editor, the Akai editor, to uh, line up with C1 and go up chromatically from there. So you're going to need the Akai Mini MK Editor. Um, and when you first open it, you will notice that pad 1 in bank A, the first note is in fact G sharp, when what we need to actually set it to is C, because that's the first note that it falls on in Ableton. Now what we're going to do is actually set it to C2, even though in Ableton the the note of the first note actually falls on C1 in Ableton. The problem is is that in this editor the notes are always one octave higher for the pad that you are assigning it to. So when I assign C2 to pad 1, it will actually be C1 in Ableton. C2 will trigger C1 in Ableton. So that's one thing to always like I'm not sure if anybody else has this issue but if you do maybe this is the uh, situation that you that uh similar to mine that you had. So with that knowledge I can just, you know, manually go through and assign C sharp to and go up chromatically but the fastest way is auto populate in the tools go to tools go to auto populate uh click on set scale starting with note put an x there. And we're going to start with note C2, which is actually C1 in Ableton. And we are going to set it so that it's going up chromatically. You can even set it to major minor scales, whatever you want later on. But for this demonstration, um, it's going to be chromatic up. This is so you can play straight up when you uh, just slice a sample. We're going to apply these notes to bank A. So if you notice, in the bank A, all the notes have now been changed going up chromatically. Say, if, for example, I wanted to continue the next eight pads in bank B to continue off from where bank A left. I would look at the last note in pad 8 on bank A, which is G2, and the next note after G2 is obviously G sharp 2. So I would go into auto populate still, um, set the note to G sharp 2, and apply this to bank B. So now, chromatically, uh, bank B is continuing where bank A left off. So all you have to do is just hit that green button to set your keyboard to bank B, and you will continue. And now you essentially have 16 pads to play with. Once you have this set up, any time you do any setup in this editor, and you have something that you like, a setup that you like, you're going to want to send it to one of these four programs preferably a program that is that it has a setup that you don't really care about but uh, I'm pretty sure by default um, these programs are all set up the same starting on the note G sharp 2 straight out of the box um, it's always that um, messed up uh, setup that Akai ships it with so anyway basically you're gonna click we're gonna send this to program 1 and you're gonna get the device set up and in this editor it doesn't matter what sound cards, what audio interface you have. It, this is just pertaining to this editor. It's always input as MPK Mini and output as MPK Mini. Always apply and click apply. Click OK. It's always that just for the editor. It doesn't pertain to what you have set up in Ableton or FL or whatever. It's always just input, output, MPK. And you're going to click send again just to, and click it a few times just to you know be sure that it's sent and go file, save as. Now, you can save it in the default folder. You could even just go to Documents, go to Akai Professional, you know, um, save it to whatever you want to name it. In this case, I'm going to call it Chromatic Up Save. It's going to ask me this. Replace it. Click Yes. 
and once they're done that close it and open up live now when you're uh when you want like once you've done with the editor you're going to press and hold program select you'll see one of the four pads at the top light up on your keyboard when you press and hold program select on the keyboard you're going to want to select in this case i'm going to select program one even if program one is already um, highlighted on the pad i'm still going to press it again while holding program select and that will basically load the setup to program one that i have um, just assigned because sometimes i've closed the editor and um, it still keeps the old setup even though i saved it last thing you're going to go options preferences go to the midi and sync tab don't worry about control surface input output none of that you're just going to look under midi ports and under input mpk mini 2 you're going to click track on and remote on just turn those two on the output could be whatever your audio interface is or your sound card whatever now you can close this um, and if all worked out well if I press pad 1 it should trigger the kick and the next pad should trigger the rim and the next one should be the snare and so on and so forth going up and if I hit bank B it should continue with the other 8 pads so hopefully that cleared some uh, confusion up for some of you that may have had the same confusion I had when I first got this keyboard. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, if you like the video, give me a like, subscribe, and um, you guys take care.